Well, I'm sure there's some people who say that these things should be thrown away. But uh, I'm going to take a look at this and see if I can't make some little bit of use out of it. I uh, found it in the usual place, and it looks like it's been unceremoniously heaved into the trash, but uh, it doesn't seem to be in all that terribly bad a shape. So, I mean, this pot here obviously needs to be replaced, unless it's just the mounting pad and it needs a new knob, and there's a little piece of plastic cover here that needs to cover it, but... Um, I don't have a hot air station, and it is the right price at free, so let's dive in and take a look. Okay, let's take a look. 2015, June 2015, so it's not that old. It doesn't look like it's complete crap inside. Those PCBs don't look too terrible, 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 just on first glance. They... Got some vibration damping on the connectors so that they don't come undone. There's some heat sinking on certain components. We've got some sort of a vacuum gauge. That is the pot there. I don't know if you can see it. So the pot itself has been completely bent. So yeah, that pot needs to be replaced. Uh, I don't even... Can we get that guy out of there? It's going to be hard. Um, but yeah, these... I mean, it's got some nice tie wrapping to keep the cables nicely organized. There's some hot schmoo here to keep that going, or to keep that in place. We've got some hand soldering of these cable connectors that are going to this back board. But... Uh, Nothing really wrong with that. There's some strain relief here that keeps them attached to the circuit board. Um, the cover plate for this was just found lying in the uh, in the bottom of it, so that just needs to be probably glued back on, I would guess, and that f gets fixed. Um, the uh, the motor itself or the uh, pump itself, seems to be nicely shock isolated to prevent, um, or to minimize the amount of vibration that happens. This uh, tie wrapping, I'm not sure what that tie wrapping is about, probably to keep this filter on, um, but, uh, but yeah, my, my initial impressions is this is not a super terrible piece of equipment. I mean, it, they could have spent a bit more um, money on on the case, but once it's all bolted together, it forms a mechanical connection. The um, I mean, they definitely saved money on uh, using plastic um, standoffs for the uh, back circuit board, and it just pops on there. They didn't use any mechan uh, any screws there, but I mean, it's not a terrible thing to to be done to be doing, I mean. Um, these are nicely heat shrunk to eliminate um, accidental contact with live connectors. Yeah, it's not terrible. I just, I don't know how it performs or anything like that, but for the price, it seems like a reasonable thing to try and use, as long as it all works. Power it up, see what we get. This is completely seized on here. It's, it's um, on an angle. There's no way that was gonna come off. So this uh, just broke off. I just broke that off, and it's just a a 10k, um, a 10k pot, completely generic. Okay, so the original does not have an indexing tab on it, so I'll have to remove that indexing tab. I'm not sure why it didn't have an indexing tab. And is the reach similar? Yeah, the reach is almost identical, so that'll work just fine. No problem whatsoever. Of course, the other option is to um, get a file and file a little notch in there so that that indexing pin can come out, but then it would protrude a bit because this case isn't all that thick. And I would have to modify the pot as well. 
So, yeah, what do I do? Which side? File this down a bit and put a notch in there. That's the right thing to do. The right thing to do. I guess I probably should have tried turning it on before I went ahead and did a, the work of fixing that. But anyways, plug it in. That's a fun... Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's producing heat, and obviously I can't tell just from touching it. So that looks like target temperature, and that looks like what the heater is currently measuring. It's getting warm, anyways. It smells warm too. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that must be its cool down period. Because I just turned the SMD rework off, and it's blowing air still. 177. 171, 165. Yeah, target temperature says off. That's a nice safety feature. 120, 117, 96, 90. Huh. Look at that. Okay, that part seems to be fine. So the iron itself comes with, I think, a smoke absorber, fume extractor. Now. Okay, this display is, is not chooching properly, so I think maybe the iron part of this thing is dead, because I don't feel this heating up at all, although I haven't turned it on. Oh, yeah. Something's happening to the display. And how about this? Is this actually sucking? And is this actually heating up? It is. It's heating up. And it is. I don't know if you can see that. Extracting fumes. Oh, that's nice. Actually. Yeah, it's totally extracting fumes. But the display is not chooching properly. So I am wondering if that's some poor solder connections or if we've got some other fault somewhere inside of there that we have to diagnose. Yeah, that's working just fine. Holy smokes. Okay, that's probably why it got uh, thrown in the bin because the temperature um, display is not displaying temperature. There's a little cowl thing looking out there. So yeah, we'll have to give that a bit of a deeper dive to try and figure out what, uh, what exactly is wrong with uh, the temperature display. But I can't imagine that being too terribly hard to, um, to debug and, and fix. So yeah, um, I'd say for the price, zero. This is a useful piece of kit. All right, let's fix the display. Okay, let's try and troubleshoot this thing. Let's see if we can get anywhere with it. I've unplugged the soldering iron wand. Apply power there. Turn off the smoke absorber, turn on the soldering iron. And we have an error condition. So let's plug in the soldering iron. Let's see if we can get something. Figure out what the problem is here. Okay.
So it looks like there is some input coming into this, but the display itself, one, two, three, four, five, that should be. So what digits don't work? Or what segments don't work? So there's two segments there that don't work. The decimal works. Nothing works in the middle one. And what about the lower one? That should be 100. 200. So the bottom three. 400. So those two. And I think those two, although it never displays a digit on this one where you would need the bottom digit or bottom segment. So we've got those two segments, those two segments, and that whole middle segment is out. So um, I think what we do is we pop this board off and try and probe some of these to see if the LED is LEDs are toast. Maybe just replacing this is all that needs to be done, because nothing else seems to be heating up. Um, so let's do that. Let's pop the board off. Now, it's not exactly easy to get at the board, unfortunately. I'm going to pull that hose out of the way. Um, and there are one, two, three, four screws and then the pot for the temperature <clears throat> that those two tabs bend over on. So it's really just those four nuts. Okay. And I noticed that there's an unpopulated header here called sleep. I don't know if you can see that in there. But that header right there is probably a sensor that allows it to go to sleep when you put the wand down in the holder, or the, the hot air wand down in the holder. So, <clears throat> I, wonder, I wonder if we can add that. Brown connector goes there, the single wire connector goes beside it, and then what looks to be a power switch goes there. Is that going, is that going to, so that's going to an LED. Oh, uh, there's, oh yeah, there's a return, ground return there. Okay, and then there's also the, the connector for the pot, and then there is another LED indicator over here, I'm guessing. Yeah. And then there's some power connectors over here. So... Blues on top. Whoops. Blue, black, black, and then orange, orange, green, red. And that should free up the board. So I had to apply a little bit of heat to get this off, but uh, I think that'll be fine. Uh, I hope I didn't put too much heat on there and it'll glue back down nicely. And there we have the circuit board out. There's nothing too fancy about this. It's not some sort of tactile push button um, membrane switches. It's just um, standard tactile switches. What do we have back here? We have our display there. I don't see anything obvious on the circuit board in terms of <clears throat> Anything having crapped out, I don't see any obvious trauma. Focus? No, it's not even close to focus. There we go. Well, so there's nothing magical about it. It's just a bunch of diodes. 
So let's get our meter into diode check mode and see if we can figure out if it's the display that's bad or connectors that are bad. So figuring out which is pin one. I'm going to say that's pin one there. Hmm. But how am I going to see that? I need a mirror, don't I? Unless... I'm just going to replace my meter probes. So now I've got alligator clip and Caesar jumpers. Okay. Let the probing begin. And 12 should light up something. That's 12. Oh, am I going to be able to get in on this side? Am I hooked up backwards? Am I actually in diode check mode? No, I'm not. Now I am. <laughs> it's the little things that will hang you up every time. There we go. Okay, so pin 12. That. Okay, if the diagram is correct. All right, so what do we have? We have pin one is in the um, lower left-hand corner, and then one through five, pin six is not populated, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Pin 12, pin nine, and pin pin eight. Um, pin nine powers this LED, or sorry, pin 12 powers this digit, um, nine powers this digit, and eight powers this digit. And then the remainder, we have, uh, what do we have? Three, seven, eight. We have eight remaining pins. So eight and three is 11. Pin one is there. Pin two is the lower bar. Pin three is the decimal. Pin four is going up and pin 5 is across, and then pin um, 11, 10, and uh, where am I here? 7, that's 8, that's 9, yeah, that's 10 and 11. 7, 10, and 11. Now, if we go down to pin 9 here, we get something similar, but on the next digit. Pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5. There's no pin 6. Pin 7, pin 10, or sorry, 11 and 12. And then drop down another Another pin here, and now the same thing with this LED. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eleven, ten, uh, uh, ten, and eleven. So. All the digits of this light up, so is it a solder problem that is causing it to crap out, or is there something else that's causing it to crap out? That's the next little problem to solve. So, seven segment LEDs, how do they work? So, Basically, for each digit, you can see that. Sure, climb on up there, Sadie. 
Um, for each digit, you have an LED. So, in essence, what you've got is one, uh, whoops, two, three, four, five, six, seven LEDs. And they can be connected in either common cathode or common anode. So you either connect up the um, anodes or you connect up the cathodes together. In our case, we've got common anode LEDs. So they connect up like this. And this was going to be either pin 12, uh, 9, or 8. And then this was pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Oh, we've also got a decimal. Um, 7, 10, and 11. But notice that... So we have three copies of this, basically. Um, and all of these are common to each of the three digits. So what you'll have in, actually is uh, this will also go off to another set of LEDs uh, and then it'll also go off to a third set of LEDs. That's drawn terribly, but you get the idea. So in order to drive one of these, um, what you do is you create... Hello, Sadie. Your paw is lovely in the picture right there. Really? It's petting times? Rubbing the neck time? So, to drive a, a set of three, um, seven or seven and a half segment, seven point eight segment, whatever you want to call that decimal, what you do is you in you have three signal pins. So, so that's going to be. Um, so let's call this pin twelve. And then we're going to call this pin 9. Uh, what was that? 9. And then we're going to call this pin 8. And so you've got a timing diagram that looks like this. You enable digit 1, then enable digit 2, then enable digit 3, and then you cycle through those. And then in here, you've got your various, um, various digits that are going to be illuminated for that time. Some of them might be off. Some of them might be on, and whichever ones are off and on will give you your digit. So you have uh, have to do some uh, persistence of vision, or I wouldn't call it multiplexing, but um, so basically that's how you drive a seven-segment display. You cycle through them um, fast enough for the eye to not see the flicker which is, you know, 60 frames a second. <clears throat> um, you can even, well, 60 frames a second is, is very flicker-free. Um, 30 frames a second is what causes uh, the illusion of, of motion in motion pictures. So, you know, 60 frames a second is pretty, pretty reasonable, looks good. 
could even do it as fast as 120 frames a second if you've got a fast enough microprocessor. And so what you're doing is you've got some sort of a loop inside of your um, inside of your program that will cycle through these on a regular basis. You probably use some sort of a timer to switch between them, and then you um, clock clock out your digits one at a time. And that's driving this. So what we've discovered is that all of the digits on all of the digits are fine in and of themselves. So there's either something wrong between um, the micro, between the microcontroller and the digits because really all you've got is some pull up or you've got some safety seriously. All you've got is current limiting resistors that determine the uh, that manage the current on your uh, on your board or on your LEDs. And the other the only other thing that can go wrong is the microcontroller. So let's hope it's not the microcontroller. And let's just hope that it's either bad solder connections uh, or um, loose or just receding the uh, the pin on the pins on the microcontroller. I mean, that, that's a cheap socket. And over time in a in an environment, the socket can develop corrosion and just reseeding the chip can solve some problems. So let's first of all do some ringing out of those resistors, make sure none of them have failed short, and uh, take it from there. None of them have failed open, I meant. Okay. Thank you for the moral support, Sadie. We have nicely labeled pins. D... C, G, D, P, E, A, F, and B. So, pin 1, I think, is... Uh, what is it? E? Yes. Pin 2 is supposed to be D. Uh, nope. Pin 3 is D, P. Pin 4 is... C, yeah. Pin 5 is not D. Not E, F, B, Z. Well, well, there you go. I see some of these just aren't connecting. That's also DP. That makes no sense. What? Is that even populated? Um, hard to tell. Oh wait, no, that's pin 12. Right. Pin 12. Oh yeah, V. So V would be the voltage. V2 should be one of these guys. And it's not getting to either of them. But V3 should get to... There we go. Hmm. I wonder what the schmoo is on top of here. Okay, so the digits are uh, E, D, C, B, A, F, G, and decimal point, and that's pins 11, 7, 4, 2, 1, 10, 5, and 3. So that means that V1 is equal to 12, V2 is equal to 9, and V3 is equal to 8. Okay, let's see if we can ring those out. And they work now. You gonna help, Sadie? Or are you just gonna 
Look, you looking for a lap? Get in a lap. There we go. Very helpful. Pin one. E. So I know I said that the soldering didn't look too bad, but a uh, closer inspection leads to <clears throat> a, uh, a problem that I found that I later fixed, and that is starved solder joints. So on the back side of that board is a little daub of solder, and that's about it. And it doesn't come through the other side. At least when there's a trace on both sides of the board, they had a plated through hole, but... Uh, when there's no pad on the other side, there's no plated through hole. And most of the, most of the, the solder joints looked like that one. Um, and like I said, just a little dab of solder on the other side. Um, none of the solder had flowed through um, to fill the hole. So, I mean, it was, uh, it was pretty shoddily done, I think. Now, I don't know, maybe that is normal. Um, soldering and it shouldn't actually flow through to the other side but it just seems to me that that <clears throat> is relying on an awful lot of strength coming from just a small amount of solder on the board. I went over the board and fixed all of those uh, as many of them as I could from the other side flowing more solder in trying to get it flow to the other side but um, I couldn't get them all. Okay, at least it's time for some tests fitting here. Oops. Okay, let's see what we get. Purr. What the heck's purr supposed to mean? Oh, dear me. I may have melted something. Uh, yeah, still not right. Still not right. Oh my god. Okay, so the uh the digit that or the uh segment that wasn't working was where am i segment c was not working that goes to pin four and pin four connects to a resistor that goes across here to here and i've just pulled the solder off of here and notice there is no plated through hole in there so they even if you glob a little bit of solder onto there, it's not flowing through to the other side to make a connection on the other side of the board where the uh, the trace is. So, like, really? It's ridiculous. So the board construction, um, where there was a, uh, a through hole, looks something like this. So this would be a cross section of the board through one of the holes. Now, on the top, there would have been a, uh, a pad, a layer of copper. So that layer of copper extends off and becomes a trace. So if you're looking at that from above, say you have a something that looks like that, so that would be a 45 degree view. And then on the bottom, if there was no copper pad, you would be relying on the leg of whatever component is coming through there. So you would have something that looks like this coming through the hole and going up to your component. Now, 
In the case of the I, the IC holder, what you've got is something that basically comes down to the layer of the so the IC socket prevents you from getting <clears throat> into here. So what you're expecting is whatever solder you put on this side, which won't look like that, it'll look more like this, a little ball around here, to try and flow up into here and make contact here. Otherwise, you're counting on this pin, which has some width to it. So looking at that in so profile, a bit of profile, you're hoping that that pin makes some contact with the board edge, which is making copper contact here. But I'd be surprised if, if you could get this hot enough without destroying the socket so that solder would flow up here. And then how are you even going to flow any heat onto this pad in order to get um, any uh, get anything, any, any reasonable solder bond between your copper layer and your pin. So that's just, just a terrible, terrible design. I don't know if that helps the matter, explain the matter any or not, but anyways, it was, uh, um, I fixed it by putting the, uh, putting on the bottom here, a, uh, a second, uh, second, well, putting a, a bodge wire across here so that this goes off to a resistor so that it would make contact with that pin and not fix the problem. But, uh, oh yeah, very helpful, very helpful, Sadie. Is this what you want to find a lap? Yes probably what you want. Anyways, um, certainly a good reason for a board revision, and I can't believe that, well, yeah, I can't believe it. Um, anyways, so that was one of the issues, and I bet you there are other pins on this socket that are just as poorly designed, but um, sad. It's just sad is what that is. Okay, solder in a little bodge wire, clean her up, and we will see what we got. Okay, let's see what we got. Pen. Well, not per. Pen. That's better. So let's put the off. Oh, there we go. That's looking more like it. Ah. Oh. And, huh, hot. <sighs> okay, so, I'm not 100% convinced that the build quality on these is uniform, because I have seen some reviews of these, and they seem to suggest that they are a reasonable unit. Um, but perhaps the caveat there is reasonable unit for the price. Um, and if you do have one that doesn't seem to be performing well, take it apart. Take a look at it. See if the um, solder joints are as starved as these were. And um, check for um, any, uh, uh, any pads that don't exist on both sides. And then be careful about those. Because, yeah. <sighs> Anyways. Um... There it is. That's a hot air station. I don't know how uh, it's probably, you know, probably all the rest of it is working just fine. And it was just the crappy solder that is the problem. I'm going to use it for a little bit, see if I can calibrate the, uh, the temperature against whatever I've got on my multimeter and um, take it from there. But um, anyways, yeah. So a, I will call it a uh, qualified success in terms of a repair. Certainly the price was right. Zero dollars. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Another thing that's suboptimal about this thing is the uh, the strain relief. This cable is improperly sized for this connector or vice versa. So 
either that or the insulation has shrunk and it's no longer providing strain relief. Now, uh, I'm just going to shim it with a little bit of um, heat shrink tubing and that should do the trick. But still, poor form. 